Um, how long have you been working here at the HEC Central Campus? Um, let's see, 13 years. 13 years? Yeah. It's been a long time. Yes. <laughs> you enjoy it? Very much. This is the only campus I think, well, I won't say the only campus I would work at. This is the campus I wanted to work at because it's the biggest, the busiest. Why did you choose the, why did you choose the library and why HEC? Okay, why did I choose to be a librarian? I chose to be a librarian because I like hanging out in libraries and bookstores. And when I was little, I would go to the uh, main library in the city where I grew up in. I thought it'd be really neat to work there. Um, and so when I was in college, I got a student job working 20 hours a week as a student shelver. And um, then I finished my degree and moved to another city. And the job I applied for was a uh, a paraprofessional at a library in another city and my experience at the university helped me to get the job and then I had to go on to get my uh, Master of Library Science degrees um, so I have an MLS and then I came to Houston what did I work here in HEC or come to okay so I came to HEC um, from Laredo and I came to HEC because the pay was better than what I was making the, the other place where I worked at was really good too for for where they were living. I was real surprised I had a good salary, but HCC was a little bit better. Yeah, somehow. I mean, you can, the thing to do is to try to find something you like that makes money at the same time. <laughs> what characteristics are needed to be a librarian? Well, actually, there are different kinds of librarians. Um, my kind is um, the one who works with the public. Usually, it's a public service or a reference library if you were to go to um, the public library. So, the public uh, or reference librarians um, really need to be comfortable working with people and talking a lot with people. And, um, if you don't like that, don't become a reference librarian. There are some other kinds of librarians, though, where you don't interact too much with people, and those are the people who process all the materials, the books, who buy them, um, who do kind of the behind the scenes. And uh, they, many times they have desk work, um, you know, where they're sitting down and stuff, so that's a bad thing too. Was this the first, was it first choice or first, or the first career choice? Oh, my first career choice, this was not my first career choice. My first career choice was social work. And um, I was finishing my degree in social work, a bachelor's of social work, and I decided I probably would not practice it. I liked studying it, but I really didn't want to practice. I was too close to graduating, so I finished it. Instead of starting all over and getting another major, I finished the degree and then took some other classes and then relocated and, I don't know, just end up in libraries more in social work. And I'm here now for life, just about. For life? <laughs> Almost, yeah. I mean, I like it a lot. I've been working in libraries for like, let's see, over 20 years. Maybe 25 years. Where do you see yourself in five years? Well, in five years, um, I see myself still working in libraries. If it's not an ACC, it's something that um, maybe gets me a little bit more excited than HCC. But right now, HCC is a very good employer for me, so it's going to be hard to beat it. I can't say I never leave, but uh, I lived in other cities. Thank you for your time. The information you gave us will be put to good use. All right. Good luck. Have a nice day. Thank you. Good luck with your project. Thank you. Since 1992. 92. Pretty long time. A pretty long time, but I'm a pretty old person. Uh, why do you choose to be a tutor at here at HCC? Because in 1983, when I first got a job at the University of Houston downtown, that was one of my job uh, descriptions, and I learned how to do it over that time. I worked with a lot of international students. Oh, um, was tutoring your first job or did you have another career choice in mind? Teaching was my first career choice, but social work was my first job because when I got out of college, I didn't have any opening in teaching, so I did social work for a while. And then when I became a teacher at UH downtown, I worked both in the classroom and in the lab. Oh, okay. 
Uh, what cur- uh, characteristics do you need to become a tutor? <laughs> what characteristics do you need? Uh, wow. Most, see, I didn't, when I first started, I had no idea what tutoring was. And when I worked in the lab, I started working with international students and doing that taught me how to teach international students. And so after a while, my classes filled up with international students because I had developed a method for teaching. When I first, the very first class I taught in college, all the international students dropped. Wow. Because the assignments I was giving were fine for American students, but they gave uh, very, a lot of difficulties to international students. So the lab taught me how to teach international students, and then international students started coming to my class, and so that's, that's awesome. how that worked. That's pretty nice. Um, how, where do you see yourself in five years? Still at UC? In five years? Yeah. Well, I hope I'm not dead. <laughs> <laughs> I'm 67 right now, so in five years, with luck, I might still be here. <laughs> I hope so. So you're talking about you're talking about not uh, do I move on? Moving on probably means to heaven or hell. <laughs> uh, what study habits do you want students to use that? Is- best for them? What study habits? Yeah. Well, it depends on the student probably, but they have to spend time, they have to read, they have to do their writing, do their math, and get st- assignments done on time. Okay. Well, that will be all the questions I'm going to ask you today. Thank okay. you for your time. Thank you. Okay, guys. So how many steps are there in a SQ3R method? Oh, five. There are five. Okay. Could you explain these five steps? First one is uh, uh, yeah. Wow, no. yeah. The, uh, the first one is a scan, and uh, the first step is to scan. Uh, it's meaning that you will uh, begin by reading the title, the heading, and the subheading. You also read briefly the first and the last sentence in each paragraph. You will look carefully at the object later. Okay, can you tell me step two? <coughs> so, the second step is question. The second step is uh, to question in this step you, while you are reading, try to ask and answer yourself these questions. Who, when, what, where, and why? Can you please? Oh, sorry. The third, the third step is to read. The third step is, is to read. You should read slowly and carefully because you need to understand the first before you move to the next. Read through each uh, section and uh, do not jump around or move ahead. You also take notes, highlight and uh, make uh, uh, marginal notes as you read it. Before you read it, pay attention following these notes. First, read the entire before you mark. Identify and uh, highlight the topic. Highlight key phrases. Do, do not do not highlight too much. Use two different color for important information and uh, interesting information. Stop, look up, and uh, define words that you don't know. The way that you can use when tech notes are chart, mind maps, keywords, outline, timelines flashcards and uh, summaries. Step four. And the fourth step is, is recite. The fourth step is to recite new pseudonym. Skip this step, though it's simple. Try to remember the meaning of the chapter. 
then find a partner to discuss and ask questions of each other. Make a dialogue about the main point without looking at your notes. You also do by yourself at home by decide the information and evaluate your work. If you have trouble in explanation, you can regret it until you can do good. Step 5 is a review. The last step step is review. As soon as you finish read the chapter, go back and read it again. Try to one again survey the chapter. Review uh, marginal notes, highlighted areas, and the vocabulary word. Make sure and uh, determine that you can answer the questions. You post the during the question step of SQ3R. Yeah. So thank you guys for telling us what the SQ3R method is. Thank you very much.